Good evening, dear friends. I warmly welcome you at your YouTube screens. Well, don't be shy. Come closer. Bon appetit to everyone who is eating. So, friends, our brain, as the most powerful computer, a 16-bit computer, constantly produces thoughts, useful ideas. We need it not only to remember our names, wife's name, whether we are married or not, who you are, where you are, who you are with. By the way, write how you are doing. It can also be useful for you to, for example, compose poems and, for example, develop some new technology, let's say, whatever tasks we have in our life. And blood continuously flows into our brain, nourishing it, arterial blood rich in oxygen, microelements, proteins, fats, carbohydrates. Everything that we consume from our gardens or from grocery stores, it all goes to nourish our brain. So, friends, we all know that the vertebral artery plays a big role in the blood supply to the brain, it supplies most of its blood, and is on the way. Mechanical obstacles can occur in the path of the vertebral artery, which can compress it, and our brain may not get its portion of blood, and therefore it can suffer from this. Headaches can occur from this. Dizziness, sad consequences also in the form of strokes, but of course, we will avoid this. All subscribers of my channel, you are forbidden to have bad health. This is the occipital hole where our brain successfully gets its nutrition, but there are situations when this artery starts to get compressed. What frequent manifestations can there be about this, literature and scientific sources will tell us. They say that with disorders in the spine, and in particular functional blockages between the first vertebra and the occipital bone, between the first vertebra and the second cervical vertebrae, such disorders occur. Listen carefully. About 20% of patients with persistent blockages of this department complain of hearing loss, sometimes up to pronounce a deafness. Pronounce a deafness means you will not hear anything at all. Even if you are whispered into your ear, you will not hear anything. Vision impairment occurs less frequently Subjectively, deafness is experienced as a feeling of stuffiness in the ear, often accompanied by discomfort in the occipital area. This complaint is the reason for frequent, unsuccessful communication of patients with the theater. Oh, theater in modern language is called otolaryngology. A doctor is known as Cases this ancient textbook. Cases are known from 1,994 of dramatic recovery. Dramatic recovery is not invented, so it arises after a single manipulation to restore joint play in the atlanto-occipital transition. So, friends, I suggest you get a dramatic recovery by restoring mobility in the atlanto-occipital joint. If you caught this moment somewhere about eight years ago, the Atlanta Adjusters Gang circulated around our country. They adjusted everyone's Atlanta using information that the position of the first vertebra is very important. It can squeeze the vertebral artery. They used this scientific knowledge not for good. And what they did, they tried to relax this complex of suboccipital muscles here, which is located there. Who is capable of what? With some vibrating sticks, different devices, they tried to do all this. Someone who was braver tried to move something there, but often they also had. There were not very good consequences from all this, but even with such an impact, they had successful cases. But the problem is that all of them were without medical education.
but it seems that they traveled all over the country, and this time they disappeared. Now it seems that no one corrects anyone's Atlanta, but the idea to some extent was correct. The mobility of the first vertebra, the second has a great value. The mobility of the occipital bone relative to the first vertebra. But what was their mistake? Their mistake was that they went into medicine without having a medical education. First of all, of course. But their main mistake was that they decided to deal with short neck extensors only, but they ignored one very important muscle that has a great value. In the violation of the movement of the first and second vertebrae, this muscle is here. It is here. Guess by its shape what it is called. You see, it starts from the mastoid process. The mastoid process is located here on the skull. Here is the angle of the lower jaw behind it. It starts from the same process. Did you guess by the shape what this shape reminds you of? For some reason, the person who named this muscle, the shape of this muscle, reminded him of a belt. It's unclear why, maybe a belt that is fastened in a car, but it doesn't look like a belt at all. But it's called the belt muscle of the head. There is another one, the second belt muscle of the neck. We won't touch it now. We don't need it. The belt muscle of the head doesn't look like a belt at all. What does it look like? How would you name it in the comments? Let's rename this muscle because it doesn't fit. Most likely, it's the same person who named the pear-shaped muscle. Pear-shaped? He never saw pears in his life. He never saw belts in his life. Maybe he was never hit with a belt in childhood. Therefore, he doesn't know what a belt looked like, so he named it the belt muscle of the head. Maybe by surname. Maybe that's what he was called. Petrov. I don't know. It's hard to say. Now you need to look at such information in Wikipedia. So, friends, the belt muscle of the head, what does it do? It has a great significance in stabilizing the neck, stabilizing the head. If two muscles tense up at once, our head will do this. Look up. When we look down, this muscle, it tenses up. Eccentrically, concentrically, how to tense, that is, when. When our head drops, it doesn't relax. It stretches while maintaining its tension. And most importantly, this is one of the main functions of this muscle. It works during rotation. If I turn my head to the northeast now, my sternocleidomastoid muscle will work on the right side. All right, if I turn to the left, then with my head turned and the left works, you see the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the left side. And here, behind, the belt muscle on the left just tensed up. So they work. The right sternocleidomastoid and the left belt muscle together, they turn my head. Ideally, they create equal efforts and a smooth, neat movement is created, like oil, between my occipital bone, the first vertebra, and the second vertebra. At the same time, the vertebral artery is not squeezed in any way. Small muscles also maintain their tone. These short extensors, oblique muscles here, under the occipital group of muscles. But if my sternocleidomastoid muscle did not tense up well enough during the turn, then in order not to turn my head excessively, the belt muscle begins to tense up in here. Due to the constant overload of this muscly, painful arise will often occur. These are called trigger points. A trigger point is such an area in the muscle that forms for example, after overloading the muscle, after damaging the muscle, and such an area remains tense all the time, and this tense area then interferes with the muscle's work. The muscle can shorten because of it, can lose tone. The fascia of this muscle can stretch, and because life is arranged in such a way that the head is turned to one side, we turn our head more often in one direction and less often in the other. Do this experiment during the day. Record how many times you turn your head to the right and how many times to the left. And then you will be surprised how you were able to record all day. 
then you will be surprised that the difference is big. Usually, if your right hand is working, you take food into your mouth with your right hand, then you look at what you are going to eat. Therefore, your head will turn more often in this direction, and the right muscle is usually better developed. But in case the left sternocleidomastoid muscle lags behind, it will also contain such areas of tension. Very often, the head turns better in one direction and worse in the other for the same reason, because of this residual tension on the side. One muscle does not allow it to turn your head to the other side. So, friends, let's not talk too much. We need to find out how to treat her now. How do I get to her? After all, she's not exactly on the surface. How do we find her? So, to find her, it's not that easy to reach her. That's the secret. Here we have the sternocleidomastoid muscle ahead of us. It will be our landmark. We can reach this muscle by turning the head. That is, we need to turn our heads. Let's say we want to work on the right muscle. For this, we turn our head to the left. The sternocleidomastoid muscle. Here's the back edge. It's located right here. But you will find it if you tilt your head a little. You will find such a muscle right here. This muscle formation is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And right behind it, when you turn your head, it will be between the trapezius. The trapezius will be at the back. Here is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. If we turn our head, this area will be revealed. We need the area of the strap muscle of the head. If our head is looking straight, it is covered by the trapezius. If we turn our head like this, it opens up. And it's exactly this area that we need to work on. That is, we turn our head, find the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and right behind it, we will immediately find the strap muscle. Also, orient yourself to the mastoid process. Here it is, right here. That is, it's this kind of mastoid formation. Who gave these names? Ask them why it's mastoid. Right here, this area, you will be affecting it now. Start with your own hands. That is, you turned your head, put your fingers here. First, compare the right and left. Very often the tension is different, the muscle tone is different on the right and left. It's convenient to apply pressure with the thumb. That is, you turned your head, and in this position, you just put your finger here. And here, you press on this muscle and hold for five seconds. Then you relax. Then press again and relax. This is the first way to affect this point. Make ten movements like this. Second, you put it on this spot. You've turned your head. You've put your thumb there. And now, you start turning your head back. You keep your finger in place right here. And you turn your head again. You turned and back. You turned and back. You turn back. All the time keeping your finger on this point. In this position. This muscle will be worked out even more in motion. It will be more elastic. After this impact, you'll be surprised how much better your head will turn. Now in the opposite direction. Do the same thing on the other side. Very often it can be painful on just one side. For example, if the head turns poorly to the left, sometimes it happens that it is more tense on the right. Why it's important for this muscle to be in good condition? Because it's specifically the condition of the head's belt muscle depends on the condition of the vertebral artery, whether it will be compressed or not, because if their tone is different, the position of the head often changes, up to the point a tilt can be, such a shift of the head, towards the stronger muscle. But that's not all. If we just take it with you, eliminate this muscle spasm. Most likely the same thing will appear for you again tomorrow. You will do this every day. If you do it 366 days a year, she will appear to you every time. To prevent this from happening, which muscle requires training? Correct, the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the opposite side, but we will train both, both the right and the left. Her training is like this. Laid on the back, turn the head, now the right one will work. Turn the head, look into my eyes and we lift the head, lifted, lowered. In this position, the right one works. The sternocleidomastoid muscle and the head's strap muscle relaxes, even if you put a finger on it. 
you'll find out how relaxed it is at that moment. And these are the movements you make. Three approaches, but you can start with five times. Gradually bring it up to 10, even 15 times, in one direction and in the other direction. This is how you work this muscle out. That is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It's like an antagonist to the strap muscle of the head. But at the same time, they also work together. They turn our head. If one of them weakens, the other will tense up. So, friends, we did this exercise. Immediately felt the blood rush to the head. New, fresh, rich in oxygen. Because nothing is constricting the artery anymore. Everything is fine. And in this way, we are improving our brain's blood supply. Hearing as well, vision. That's all according to the scientific literature. So, friends, you see and hear better now? So remember, we put comments. We write likes. We help parents. We engage in sports until new broadcasts.